I've noticed that as we progress here on the Black Bear Forge channel that I'm sort of presenting more and more difficult concepts, tools that are a little harder to make, projects that take more tools to make, and things are evolving. And that's a natural progression as you blacksmith. However, I also recognize that not everybody has all of the tools or has even got a complete shop at this point. Some people are still working with that campfire in the backyard using a hairdryer as a blower and that 10 pound lump of who knows what they got at the scrap yard and making bending forks and window grills and trivets and things like that simply aren't something that they can tackle. So I'm going to try and keep mixing more basic projects in with the more advanced projects. If you're a beginner, watch the advanced projects. There's still things you can learn. You can still pick up tricks and tips and hopefully you'll remember some of that as your abilities and your equipment improves. And hopefully if you are a more advanced smith, you aren't too bored by this little stuff. But today I thought we would be very basic. We're going to make a drive hook. This is starting off as six inches of quarter inch square bar. If you want a little bit bigger hook or a little bit longer hook, use a little bit more material. You, if you want something heavier to hang heavy things on like chains or something, make a much bigger hook out of three-eighths or half inch even. Although I can't imagine a drive hook out of half inch. I think there's better hooks you can make at that point. But anyways, quick simple little project. You don't have to have any special tools. Forge, hammer, anvil, and we'll show you how to do it without a horn on your anvil if you are using a scrap make-do anvil that doesn't have a horn. There are ways to get by without it. The hook is fairly simple, but involves some basic techniques, like drawing out. And I'm going to start by drawing out a place for a little curly cue on the end of the hook, purely for looks. Notice I'm drawing out at the edge of the anvil so that my hammer kind of overhangs the anvil. And that way, when I get to this tip, I'm not bouncing my hammer off the anvil. I'm bouncing it off, or forging the the end of the hook. And that's a fairly simple one heat taper. If you need two or three heats, feel free. No big deal at all. And I want to take our little taper and I just want to gently forge, working off the edge of the anvil and kind of glancing blows, a little curl. Now if you're working in a coal fire, this is going to be easy to burn off, be careful don't get it too hot. Now you can cheat and you can use a pair of round nose pliers to make these curls but you'll learn a lot more doing them at the edge of the anvil. Now typically I would put a simple bending fork like this in the vise and I would bend the, the hook around that or if it's a size hook I make all the time I have this little jig that goes in the anvil and I can bend my hooks around that Bending them freehand at the horn is pretty reliable, or bending them freehand with a little cone mandrel is a good way to go. But again, we're going to assume that you may not have all those things. Or I should say you may not have any of these things, because if you have one of them, that's all you need. If you made a bending fork like this, you could do it by hand, although this one's probably too big. You don't want one with the, the teeth closer together, but that was the last video we did, so that would be an option. But we're going to do it just at the edge of the anvil. For those that don't have an anvil with hardy holes or horns and don't have bending forks and all that stuff. The only thing we're going to use is to help us refine it is just a piece of round rod and I think this is 5 eighths. Just depends on the size hook you want. Now, I don't want to take a chance on ruining my little curl so I'm going to dip that in my bucket of water that's sitting next to the anvil. And I'm going to work this just like I did the curl and start a curve here and then come back up and I'm trying not to hit, notice my hammer is tucked in under the curl. Be gentle with this. Now I think this is probably too long through here which is really easy to do so I'm going to try to fix that. So for this I'm going to try to cool that tip off again so I don't hurt it. I'm just going to drive this back a little bit 
and then drive that down. Try not to hurt your curl. And that's a little bit better looking hook. I'm going to take my bar. I'm just going to drive it down and side there. And just kind of clean up the, the radius. If you're doing this over the horn or in a bending fork, you probably won't need to do that because you'll have be able to control this a little bit better. But that makes for a nice little hook. And with six inches of bar, it is a little hook. And if you want more, just cut a longer bar. So that's really all I need to do to that end. That's the hard part right there. And we've done that without specialized tooling other than a random round bar without the horn of the anvil. Don't have to have a special anvil. You just need forge, hammer, and something to work on. So now we want to draw out the point. This will be fairly simple. Just realized I forgot to turn my lights on. So if it's been a dark video, I'm sorry. Now here we have a little bit of a problem trying to draw this out. I'd rather draw it out over here. And if we turn the hook up, we can do that. You just have to make sure your aim is good enough. And that's a lot of wild aim there if you hit that hook. But if you're starting out, it might be a risk. But if you're starting out, chances are your anvil is not five inches wide. So you want a nice graceful taper, and you want to leave probably an inch or so from the top of the hook to where your taper starts, maybe a little bit more. That's an aesthetic consideration. Again, if this takes two or three heats to make your taper, two or three heats is okay. Now we just want to go to where our taper ends, or, or at least make sure the entire taper is in. My taper ends there, but if I want to bend there, that's okay. But I don't want any taper left on the vertical part of the hook that doesn't show. And it's just a matter of bending that over. Really not too difficult. And my anvil slopes a little here, and that's why it's difficult to get a perfect 90 degree bend at the anvil. And we'll address that in another video. Now I've been holding this in a pair of tongs and keep talking about not having tools. Um, you have to have a way to hold it. You can get by with holding it in a pair of vice grips. And I'm going to clamp this pair of vice grips right up in there when we come back to this. I'm going to heat it up again. And that will hold that part. I'm going to put a little crescent wrench on here and then I'll be able to twist that just freehand. One problem with vice grips is they will often leave marks. If you're going to use them as tongs you might want to uh, grind the teeth off of them. So that's not too hard to do that way. Make sure it's all straight at this point. If it's not you can Put the crescent wrench back on and twist a little more, twist a little less, whatever you need to do. But that is a finished little drive hook. Very simple. Now I think it could have some things that are a little better. I think I'm going to try and dress that. I, what I don't like about this is the way this hook comes up. This looks lazy to me. It looks unintentional. So I think I'm going to try to heat that little bit up and I'm going to fix that. This kind of thing is very simple to, to fix if you are working over the horn. Just a little bit more difficult if you assume you don't have a horn. But essentially I'm going to put the form back in and I'm just going to straighten that off a little bit. That's not bad. That's a lot better for that, but I've closed up my hook a little bit, so I'm also going to try and straighten that out just a hair. It's a little bit of fiddling. 
If doing this over the horn or over a, a cone mandrel, you can see all this. Lots better ways to hold things, and it goes a lot faster. Maybe a little selective leverage. So that's a little better. So I consider that a finished little drive hook. It's ready to be stuck in the wall somewhere. And that's done without using the horn of the anvil or a bending fork or any of that kind of stuff. All that will make it faster. If you use some of those tools you might be able to make this in two or three heats. One heat for this end, one heat for the spike, and one heat for the twist is not unreasonable. In fact, let's just do one. I don't know if you can see that, but that point is heating up as I hammer because I'm hammering quite quickly and assertively. It cools down very quickly when I quit. I'm going to put my little curl on there. I want to cool my curl, and the heat may not show very well in the video, but it is still hot enough that I can bend this. My little bending jig, nice, clean, pretty hook there, the straight back. So that's my first heat. Ninety degree turns between hammer blows helps keep my taper nice and even. Still enough heat that I can get in here and I can make my bend. Bend a little bit more material on this one. It'll drive in the wall a little further. Sometimes working to the edge of the hardy hole is better than working to the edge of the anvil. And of course a vise and a twisting wrench are the easiest way to go for putting the twist in it. This gives me a really good chance. I can eyeball straight down the hook and the spike. Make sure everything is straight. Gives me my last chance to fix any little inconsistencies. And we have a finished hook. So these can be quite fast to make and the more you practice the faster they'll get. And there's a few drive hooks doesn't take very long. I did one as a sample before the video, one without any special tooling for the main intent of the video, and then one to show you how quickly these can be made if you have a little jig and a vise and a twisting wrench and that kind of stuff. Something to aspire to if you're just starting out, but don't worry about speed if you're just starting. Well, I hope you found that helpful. I hope if you're new and have minimal equipment, that gives you an idea of how you can do things without needing a bunch of specialized equipment. And if you've got a little bit more, it gives you some ideas about little jigs that you could use to make hooks. And we'll talk more about specialized little jigs and things like that in another video. Um, this is just about doing the drive hook with minimal tooling. And there you have it. That's about all I got on the subject. So I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Share the videos with your friends. Take a few moments, watch some of the other videos, but then get out to your shop, make something, challenge your abilities, use your imagination, but stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.